Now, let's look at uh, the mechanisms how the exchanges can typically control the risks that are involved in high speed trading. Sometimes uh, we use the word high frequency trading or high speed trading wherein we mainly use algorithms to typically do the trading. So programs identifying the buy sell opportunities and directly placing the trade with the exchanges. That is what we typically categorize as a high speed trading or a, a high frequency kind of a trading. And we know that there are various risks that are involved as a part of that high speed trading. Now, our focus is primarily looking at what are the mechanisms that are available to the exchanges to control the risks behind this high speed trading. Before we get into the mechanisms, just trying to understand what we are talking about as high speed trading. We, we know that it is a, a high frequency trading means a, Hundreds and thousands of trades are placed within no time. Everything is automated. We have software programs being written, which and uh, we use the networks to typically connect the exchanges order matching system from the terminals of the customers or from the terminals of the high, uh, high frequency uh, trading firms and we use the mechanisms of algorithmic trading. So what we see in this process is thousands of orders are sent to the exchange within seconds. So here the firms which are getting into this high speed trading they don't go through this broker dealer mechanism or they don't go through this uh, future commission uh, merchants, especially for the futures. Generally, we talk about brokers or dealers as the intermediaries. When we are uh, looking at uh, the uh, when we are uh, looking at uh, the stock markets or the option markets, and the same future commission merchants uh, come into picture in case of futures market. So instead of taking, uh, instead of placing the trades through these brokers, dealers, when we talk about high frequency trading, all those, uh, all those firms which are involved in this high frequency trading, they access the market directly. They don't go through this broker dealers or FCMs. And even the kind of a trading platform, either they develop it on their own proprietary or they rely on some vendor provided platform which will place the trades and uh, send the orders directly to the exchanges matching engine and uh, especially in case of equity markets and uh, uh, it, uh, and in case of uh, options markets that kind of uh, trade placing is what we call as sponsored access Whereas in case of futures market, it is being referred to as direct access. And uh, this typically uh, is so high in volume. At some point, it even went up to 70% of the total volume of the market. But in general, on an average, these kind of trades constitute almost 25 to 50% of the total trading volume that happens on the exchange. But what is the clear definition of high frequency or high speed trading it is not clear wherever it involves direct trade placing with the exchange bypassing the brokers and dealers route typically is being looked at or considered as a high frequency trading on one side, there is a, a positive uh, uh, feel that simply says high speed trading firms, they provide liquidity to the market. The reason being, 
there is uh, any kind of small opportunity that arises the trades are placed on a very large scale so that is where the liquidity can come into the market very effectively but what is typically seen is in a market like options market especially we talk about uh, stock options when i talk about stock options okay hundreds of shares hundreds of stocks multiplied by a big number of strike prices not just one price multiple strike prices and multiple contract months so even for one single stock there are multiple products that are available multiple product classes that are available which is where we really need to see whether this high speed trading can be successful in terms of maintaining liquidity in a direct way or not and even when we look at it from the high speed trading firms there are some of them who get registered themselves as dedicated market makers whereas some of them need not be market makers at all and when they are becoming market makers they are regulated they quote both the bid and the ask prices and the more and more they quote both the sides they are in a way bringing more and more liquidity into the market because as per regulation it is mandatory that they go with both the bid as well as the ask price for a specific number of days for each of the assets or the product class whereas when when they are not designated they have no obligation to provide the dedicated liquidity that is where there is a clash that is coming between high frequency trading firms versus market makers it's even uh, illegally alleged that the high frequency trading firms they are trying to eat away the profits that are designated for the market makers because the market makers typically have the responsibility to bring out liquidity into the markets so what this high speed uh, high speed firms or uh, high frequency trading firms do they are investing heavily in faster and better technology any small profitable trading opportunity that is uh, coming up they are executing it in high volumes so that's the reason uh, the because of the regulations their responsibility to provide uh, uh, liquidity especially in cases when the markets are not doing well is typically going off and that too uh, for uh, products like uh, stocks or options there are multiple trading venues so uh, even controlling is very difficult but in case of futures yeah at least uh, uh, there is no concept of designated market makers across so even there is no obligation to quote both the sides so even the liquidity becomes even more a problem in case of the futures market but on one side in futures market generally majority of the products are traded only on one single uh, exchange but uh, in case of uh, uh, stocks as well as uh, the options we see the trades happening on multiple exchanges multiple trading venues as uh, as such right now to make sure that uh, while someone is placing an algorithmic trade let's say this particular firm which is a high frequency trading firm is actually placing a trade directly with the exchange matching engine there needs to be a few risk controls that needs to be set in place pre trade before the placing of the trade some things that need to be kept in mind post trade after the trade is executed some things that need to be kept kept in mind so first risk with respect to the trading platforms because as we have discussed earlier the trading platforms either are proprietary or purchased from some vendor some key things every trading platform will come out with is 
a preset limit they will have a mechanism of set the limits there could be a limit set with respect to price there could be a limit set with respect to quantity or volume there could be a limit uh, set uh, at each account level for each account or for each uh, product class so whatever is the preset limit that is done or even the dollar value of the trades the credit limits any of these limits once it is preset and once an order is approaching that limit there is an alert that is generated by the trading platform and in some cases it can even go further in terms of stopping the order entry once the limit is breached or it can even go to such an extent that it will require the trader to take an opposite position once the limit is hit so when he has gone for a buy order once that limit is uh, reached it could even uh, indicate the trader to take a sell kind of a position now everything is fine but at the end of the day this is an algorithm algorithm is something which is prone to errors because there is a lot of software development and programming that is involved in it and every software program is having some kind of uh, bugs or errors in it so generally this kind of placing trades uh, they are found that they can be exposed to programming errors there could be network issues there could be hardware failures and many such kind of problems any erroneous orders that are coming they should be identified and controlled otherwise they could result in much much severe damages and this entire thing needs to be taken up at the trading platform layer but in case the high speed frequency uh, high frequency trading firms they are not addressing these the exchange will act as the last line of defense because to the exchange it can't accept it should not accept these kind of orders so it will set the pre trade limits for all market participants and in some cases it is providing some kind of functionality we'll see it is giving some kind of kill button kind of functionality some kind of cancellation of the orders some kind of functionality is being given to the clearing members and allow them to determine the limits for their orders so they can set their own orders and at the same time they can set the orders of their clients who through whom they are placing the trade so some kind of risk controls need to be very much in existence and some of the common risk checks or risk uh, uh, risk limits that are typically set from an exchange perspective as the line last line of defense is one it generally most of the exchanges go with an order size limit for each product class for each clearing member what is the maximum size of the order right what is the maximum number of uh, trades that can typically be placed number of orders that can be sent to the exchange number of messages that could be sent to the exchanges matching engine during a specified time period so for whatever uh, capacity that is being purchased based as uh, generally it goes with a subscription kind of a mechanism based on whatever is the capacity purchased during a specific time period let's say in uh, in in one minute or in fuse in one second per second not more than these many messages can be sent to the exchange but if required additional messages capacity can very well be purchased but that is one limit with uh, with the exchange comes up uh, in order to make sure that uh, the system is not flooded up uh, with the high speed uh, uh, high speed trading uh, firms sending regular messages in order to place the trade trying to compete with the others and trying to get uh, their trade to be executed first in some cases the exchange can also come out with a price banding mechanism wherein the orders are accepted only if they are within a range 
so unless uh, the quoted price or unless the price uh, with the uh, uh, hfts are sending to the exchange lies between this and this it will not accept those orders it is directly rejecting those orders but in some cases when these orders are coming from the market makers even if they are the outside the range the exchange is typically not rejecting them and uh, it can also put a stop logic kind of a functionality it is preventing the orders so that a domino effect will not be created across and uh, even some kind of intraday position limits can be set some exchanges are doing that within a single day the maximum positions uh, on each of the open positions all these things are typically set and some exchanges even have gone further to set the credit limits which is purely a dollar value which a firm can trade in one single day here yes the this credit limit is more and more appropriate when there is uh, when the product is typically traded on one venue only but if it is on multiple venues like stocks and options where there are multiple venues for trading this particular exchange can typically uh, know how much dollar value is being placed on one on that particular exchange but it can doesn't know how much has been placed on the other exchange so for those kind of uh, products which are uh, traded on multiple trading venues this mechanism would be very difficult to monitor but for futures where generally it is on one single exchange it might very well be established and uh, the biggest problem is some clearing members they are not establishing the pre trade risk limits at all first thing they want the trade to go quick they want to reduce the latency or any kind of delays that are coming up because of this pre trade control second they are more and more confident that the exchange is having this kind of a mechanism to typically uh, uh, do a check before executing the trade so they are not establishing pre trade controls which is again increasing the risk very heavily and from the clearing members perspective they want to get more and more business so they are promoting the speed de reduced delays as a marketing aspects or promotional aspects to get more and more business but that is what is increasing the risk in the system overall and apart from that the trading firms generally especially when some kind of connectivity issues come out or when they are typically placing high frequency trades at some point once the trade is being placed they have some kind of confusion and uncertainty regarding their orders positions how many of them are executed how many of them are still work in progress they really need a clarity on there for that they are typically calling up the staff of the exchange and if at all they feel that some of the orders are really erroneous then they can call the exchange to typically cancel all or few orders that is one facility which the exchange has typically given to the clearing members to get into to cancel their orders especially if they are more and more erroneous even some exchanges have gone to an extent that they have given the kill button option to the market makers and clearing members what does this mean instead of instead of the firm calling up the exchange staff and getting their orders cancelled a kill button is available at the market makers or the clearing house or clearing members level itself where they can typically cancel all or few of the orders and in some some exchanges it has gone even to the extent not just limiting to market makers and clearing members 
but even to all the participants especially uh, even those who are doing direct taxes to the exchanges matching engine so which means all high frequency traders are provided access uh, are a kill button kill button kind of a functionality where they can cancel their orders uh, if they are found to be erroneous and uh, they they can even uh, some kind of parameters can be entered some kind of limits can be entered and whenever the system identifies that they are breached the activate act, the, the kill functionality is activated automatically and cancel on disconnect it is another facility with the exchange is providing especially when there are connectivity related issues when the see here the connectivity could be from two dimensions one the client of the high frequency uh, trading firm and the server of the high frequency trading firm two server of the high frequency trading firm server of the exchange or the trading venue wherever there is especially if this is a connectivity issue there is a facility where the firm can typically get this cancel on disconnect facility wherein it can select few or all of them and go for cancellation of the same but in some cases it even exchange takes the decision in terms of cancellation so either the exchange can bust off all the trades or in some cases it is even going ahead to the extent that the decision is left to the trading firms itself whether they want to continue the trade or they want to cancel it off and what we see is almost every high speed trading firm it subscribes to this feature because whenever they want to take it off pull it off they can very well do that the other main thing that comes in their way is especially if there are error trades error trades are more to do with programming errors algorithm design errors out of control algorithms faulty algorithms programming problems for this from the exchange perspective there are well effective teams who are monitoring especially significant larger positions that are being placed uh, let's say instead of uh, 1 million dollar transaction because of uh, a few additional zeros or because of an inbuilt multiplier a trade has been placed for 1 billion this is more like a significantly larger position volume compared to the historical data so probably this is treated as unusual trading pattern immediately the exchange staff is giving a call to the uh, trading firm and in this case it can get into direct busting of the trades and in some cases the exchanges instead of direct busting of the trades they are adjusting the prices and executing them so some exchanges are directly uh, busting the trades whereas some of them are adjusting the price and executing them but again the the error trades need to be identified and reported within 30 minutes some exchanges are asking for as low as 8 minutes whereas in some exchanges it's even going to the extent of 30 minutes which means consistency in terms of reporting time does not exist it is purely left to the different exchanges uh, and the kind of relationships they are offering to different trading firm and what is the definition of uh, out of control algorithm the clear cut definition does not exist but one thing is very much uh, clear that these things don't occur that frequently these kind of errors are completely extremely infrequent in terms of occurrence and majority of the time they get detected especially in case of significant price impact either price falling drastically or growing drastically majority of the time only after a, a, clear, a clear impact in the price is seen these things come out a few more things to manage the risk clearing member audit 
So the clearing members, we know that typical structure wise from the clearing house, there are a few clearing members and the clearing members either uh, they clear the trades of some other non-clearing members along with their own customers. All these and here in, among these customers, some of them could be high frequency traders as well. So, as a part of the responsibility taking, we know that the clearing member will take all the financial risk of the customers as well as the non-clearing members who are doing the clearing and settlement mechanism through this particular clearing member. What we have typically seen is this entire audit process, some exchanges do outsource the process while some of them are looking for irregularities in the clearing members only when a new clearing member account is open, not on a regular basis. But that's the, one of the key things that needs to be looked at so that there, there is some requirement of improvement that uh, is, uh, that is uh, uh, essential. Then coming on to the manipulative practices, exchanges, they typically rely on some manual, manual checks, they also have automated tools. So they have largely different kinds of capabilities to monitor any kind of manipulations that are coming up. But the only drawback is they can detect this manipulations that are happening at their own exchange, but definitely not at other exchanges. And that too, when uh, the products are traded on multiple trading venues like stock and options markets, very difficult to uh, uh, assess any kind of manipulative mechanisms that are being executed by the traders. But in case of futures markets, which are typically single venue trading venues, the, the detection mechanisms are slightly easier. Then another mechanism that is typically uh, seen as a, as a risk control mechanism is the drop copy, which is a clear cut details of all the filled trades and working orders by each trading account. Some exchanges give it in a very granular level, whereas some of them give it more and more on an aggregated layer itself. Rather than trying to give more granular account wise and uh, product wise, they give it as an aggregate at the clearing members level. And some of them give both filled trades as well as working orders, whereas some exchanges give only the execution records and only the executed trades, but not the working orders. Now, at least whatever is the mechanism that is supplied by the exchange, these trading firms they do maintain an internal database of whatever the trades that they have placed and they try to compare it with the trade execution records that are supplied by the exchange, see the kind of discrepancies that have come out. But again, here there is a problem. This particular, this particular drop copy, some exchanges are providing it in real time while some of them do it only at the end of the day. So a clear understanding of the timing of the same needs to be understood by the trading firms. I'm typically looking at how this high speed trading is going to emerge over the next few years. It is felt by a lot of exchange staff that whosoever wants to shift to that, they have already shifted. In the future, the growth will not be that high. And most of the cases, as we have initially discussed, in most of the cases, the traditional market makers are not getting any kind of benefits because the high speed trading firms, they are trying to get into the roles uh, of uh, the traditional market makers, trying to place the trades, trying to get the benefit out of that smallest uh, profitable opportunities that are coming up and trying to eat away the profits of the traditional market makers. So it is even being observed 
that the traditional market makers are going to be replaced by this high speed trading firms but because uh, for the high speed trading firm liquidity provision is not a mandatory and uh, uh, as it moves unless uh, they provide liquidity more and more they can't survive regulations can come up more in terms of addressing the liquidity provisioning this particular business may not be profitable for the newer ones because they will create barriers to entry so it may so happen that the existing firms can still maintain but very few of them can get uh, can can survive so which means lots and lots of consolidations are bound to happen in the high speed trading firms and even the exchanges there are much more many more exchanges today than what are typically required uh, to provide enough competition so even there could be some kind of consolidation at the exchanges level as well but what is typically being uh, uh, is uh, being uh, uh, visualized by the exchange staff is more migrations are bound to happen to the option markets but for majority of the option markets option exchanges market taker pricing models like uh, black shells option pricing model and all typically exist so uh, the, this kind of mechanism may not be effective for those kind of exchanges and uh, as long as there is a high degree of uh, uh, fragmentation that is available in the market the arbitrage traders typically do exist and that means there is no scope that the entire business would be lost and uh, one more dimension saturation of the returns is it really the case again the exchange staff typically felt that this particular business high frequency trading business was something revolutionary something new 10 years ago 15 years ago where there was an easier opportunity to make money so whosoever has got into the business at that particular point in time they made millions and billions but now what we have been uh, seeing is across all the high speed uh, trading firms there is uh, a layoff downsizing of the staff consolidations among the various firms statistical arbitrages have completely gone down in numbers in, uh, in both europe as well as in america and uh, one gray area that has been uh, identified is in the option space where there are huge number of products multiplied by uh, many uh, uh, ma many strike prices multiplied by many uh, uh, option exercise dates creates lots of complexity in the framework so uh, how it evolves in the option space is something that needs to be visualized and uh, it's also seen that uh, though the options market provides uh, potentially wider margins but the risks and costs capital investment of trading this particular asset class is very much higher so that's one thing which needs to be looked at from the options market perspective and from an exchanges perspective some of the key concerns one the competition it's very much possible high competition results in unfair business practices coming into picture favoring a few of the clients few of the clearing members so there could be a, 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 a if the number of competitors is much more than required to get more business unfair business practices can come into picture so uh, striking a right balance between high and low latency trading firms is a big challenge at this particular point in time and the kind of interoperability among the centralized counterparties today they, the the ccps may not coordinate in terms of settlements uh, among themselves because they are fighting for their survival and existence and in terms of uh, market shares 
So because of that, the degradation in the stability of the system and the capabilities is happening, which is resulting in increase in the systemic risk. So that's one thing exchanges need to be very much cautious about. And they really feel that more and more products need to be traded on the exchange. The regulations today are getting uh, created based on lots and lots of misunderstanding of the markets. And it is expected that the regulations need to be applied consistently across all the markets, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, biased kind of mechanisms for different markets. So what the exchanges are typically uh, looking at is regulators, they really need to be reasonable. Regulations need to be reasonable. Otherwise, they are uh, worrying that the trading firms can migrate from US to those countries where the loser controls are there, especially like Asia. And uh, probably uh, all the trading venues access and transparency being provided. The tick size can't be a one price fits all. It can't be a one, one cent for every trade. Relevant to the price of the stock, the tick size should be present. Flash orders, they really need to be eliminated in the options market. Derivatives to be fungible across all exchanges. These are some of the recommendations that have come out by the exchange staff for the betterment of the market. And uh, it is very much required that the high speed trading firms also should get into the two sided court. Otherwise, they, if they are if, uh, without the market making obligations, if they don't have that market making obligation, then they can eat up the profits of the market makers. And to keep the market makers continue in that particular business, they should be provided some kind of tax benefits. And liquidity high speed trading firms provide is today not in balance with the orders they submit. So the regulations need to address this particular aspect. So overall, what we are seeing here is what is that that the exchanges have in their package especially if they have to uh, control the risks that are associated with high-frequency trading, right?